a modernist musical, as it was subtitled, which was a musical drama about two literary pioneers. Because 2023 marked the centenary of the death of Catherine Mansfield, a trailblazing modernist writer born in New Zealand. Two Tigers tells the story of her brief but extraordinary life and her turbulent love affair with editor John Middleton Murray, who ensured her legacy. I can make my mark mistress of my fate. What have I to lose? With nothing on the floor, only haze behind the count of what I choose. At this year's Edinburgh Festival Fringe, Sue was presenting Two Tigers, a modernist musical, as it was subtitled, which was a musical drama about two literary pioneers. Because 2023 marked the centenary of the death of Catherine Mansfield, a trailblazing modernist writer born in New Zealand. The musical Two Tigers tells the story of her brief but extraordinary life and her turbulent love affair with editor John Middleton Murray, who ensured her legacy. 
And this newly reimagined version, which is the one that you could have seen at this year's Edinburgh Festival Fringe, was produced a lifetime on, as Sue puts it, to mark the centenary year of her death. And indeed, this episode is being broadcast in October of this year because the 14th of October marks the 135th birthday of Catherine Mansfield. So it's entirely appropriate that we should be talking about this wonderful new musical, Two Tigers Now. And so in a minute, we'll hear a discussion about why Catherine Mansfield is a worthy recipient of a musical in her own right, and the process Sue has used to write and then rewrite a musical, to retool it, if you like, for slightly different purposes, and how Sue has sort of turned it inside out to create a totally different piece of art, which actually is more reflective of the modernist tradition. So it is art reflecting life, reflecting art. And Sue will also be talking, as the master craftsman that she is, in terms of songwriting, about how one writes a song that reflects the work and legacy of an individual in a way that is satisfying and authentic. Tig, you're really here. The little house. It's there waiting for us. It's eyes are shut until I open them. The sun touches the veranda and warms the place where your hand will rest. People who wrote in a sort of string of moments style. That's the sort of the thing about modernism is that they've cast off that Victorian idea of there being a straight narrative with mm. a godlike author and one thing leads to another and the, the author sees all and explains all. So it's from the inside rather than the outside. That's what modernism's about, is about experiencing the moment and trying to fix it on the page. Catherine Mansfield is now considered one of the most influential and important writers of what we call the modernist movement. What she called a shaking free in art and literature. This time, I feel it's a very much more intimate story and it also has very much more of her writing at the centre of it, which is, last time I thought perhaps we could dramatise the writing and bring it to life that way, and this time I think there's nothing replaces the words, really. I dreamt last night that I sat by a fire with grandmother and my brother, and when I woke up, I still held my brother's hand. That is true, for my hands were not together. They were holding another hand. I felt the weight and warmth of it for quite a long time. Where does that leave you as a songwriter? I think because she's a wonderful crafter of phrases, I have borrowed Mm. from her writing to actually insert in the lyrics quite freely. The Sam Josephs. In the scholarly, as Lottie used to say, I must write it all down, tell everything, even of how the laundry basket squeaks at number 75. Come to remembered places and renew them in writing. All the remembered places, recollections, the people we loved there, my brother and I. sharp and chill, with red clouds on a faint green sky, and drops of water on every leaf and blade. A breeze blew over the garden, dropping dew and dropping petals, shivered over the drenched paddocks, and was lost in the sombre bush. But her father was trying very hard to keep her there, and sent her on this trip of the Uruwera yes. landscape, about, I've never been to New Zealand, it's meant to be very, very beautiful. And she kept a diary or a journal while she was there. She always wrote really beautifully about nature and about what she saw and the colours she saw and the smells. She's a very, very sensual writer. She just employs all the senses. Thank you. 
you say in the piece later on about capturing that moment and then recording it on a page mm. is what she did. She can transmute real life into the record of real life. Yes. Almost like a photograph, but with more evocation, I suppose. Yes, exactly. As if you're feeling it as well as seeing it. Yes. And this was her first sort of experience, I suppose, of doing that in an extended way. And that has been published as well, actually, the Uruwera Diaries, with some beautiful watercolours, I think. But that transmutes very well into a line from the song because there's just little sort of observations about the colours and the the mist rising and the colours on the mountains and stuff that you can just lift and sort of put in there. when she was writing about Francis Carco because she was obviously... Her lover uh, for a while. Yes, yes, yeah, very, very briefly. Yes. And I think when we came to it this time, last time we made much more of Francis Carco as a person. But I think actually, sadly for Francis Carco, yes. he was more of a catalyst than anything else because I think she was having a very difficult time. She had writer's block for a long period in her life because her life was so busy and such a struggle because she didn't have much money she was given an allowance by her father once he came to terms with the idea yeah. of her coming across but he never was lavish because he didn't really want her to be here and the amount that she was picking up from her writing was not huge yeah. so money was always concerned she always wasn't living very nice places I can't get it out of my mind each time he writes I'm breathing from this dangerous feeling I just can't get it out of my mind I want him so going on in her life that made it difficult for her to focus and find that time which ironically she found once she became ill so yes. in this having had a horrible time and it being a struggle the magazine going down and Murray being made bankrupt because of the magazine and the publisher running off yes and, um, yes it wasn't his fault was it no, no, no it no. wasn't he was green behind the ears yes. and they actually published 5,000 of each copy, which was a ludicrous amount, yeah. the amount of circulation that they were going to get, and then he wanted them to pay for it all when the, you know, the publisher ex yeah. absconded. But, anyway, that's by the by. So, when she fixed on Francis Carco, I think he was sort of a bohemian idea of what she thought Murray might have been. <laughs> yes. And it was a sort of, the important thing about it was that it was, she felt love, and she felt that intoxication about love. And that then later, when she's in Bandol, she draws on that intoxication to actually produce something extraordinary in Jeanne Paul Par Francais. Craving is living in us, wishing I could fly. I can't get him out of my mind, and through this glowing flame, the burning. I 
Because what originally sort of made me, drew me to Catherine Mansfield was that I thought, short story, song. There is a kind of form constraint there. Because in a short story, you have very little time to create whatever it is you want to say. But you can say something very wide-reaching. I mean, that's what the critic said at the end, that something that actually is true of a whole life, or perhaps Mm. of life itself, in just that one little short story. And you can do the same in a song. You can, in three verses, put together some idea that actually makes people think and takes them beyond something. And then there are several songs where she sings on her own. But then, you know, and they, they, I think, in a sort of way, represent her observing nature, her finding her feelings, her, you know, the interrogation of self and her experiences of the world that she wishes to... She, she wishes to make extrovert from her intro, introspection, if that makes sense. And then when she starts interacting with other characters, so the Two Tigers song is a really good example of this, there's uh, a change of pace. Two tigers, flinging through the road, the pack go astray, followed our instincts, refused to be scared. But despite our best endeavours, people just weren't prepared for two tigers. Strong living art, willing to be bold. Two tigers, operate apart from the common mode, so let literary society pick what's false from what's true. Whatever else we choose to say, at least we saw it through. If that's over, we're together and we've earned our respite. Free to write whatever we like. Whenever we like. No deadlines. And no money. <laughs> we've never had any money. You know, so she, she meets Murray, um, and actually, there's a kind of. You write duets terribly well. Actually, I think is where I'm boiling this down to. I've noticed this in your other works as well. The single person songs are all fabulous, but the duets somehow spring uh, like two tigers, I suppose. Um, but they really do. And there are several duets in this piece, and they're not at all the same. I mean, it would be ridiculous to suggest they were, but there is, uh, you have a beautiful way of getting dialogue, of getting meaning, of getting interaction and relationship, because that's what a good duet should get across. Instruction. I present a moral tale of a way of a girl who trained a life on quite an epic scale. While others found one way of life suffice to hold the wrong. She couldn't be content with one until she tried them all. Um, and with a kind of um Blythe jauntiness, would that be fair? That's how it seems to me. There's a kind of upbeat nature um, just to the... What it, what I got was that Catherine comes alive in a different way in the company of others. You know. I'm glad you got that. Found a man to run to run. 